Hello, I'm Reverend Paul Miller, minister at Westminster United Church in St. Catharines. I'm here in beautiful Silver Spire United Church to bring you this brief reflection for Wednesday of Holy Week. Uh, the clergy of the United Churches in St. Catharines and Thorold uh, have created daily devotionals for Holy Week in 2023, and we're recording them in one another's sanctuaries. So I pray that this time of reflection and prayer will be a blessing to you as you journey with Jesus to the cross. Let us pray. Most merciful God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, was despised, rejected, betrayed, scourged, and led to a cross for the sake of a broken and hurting world, grant us the faith to see in Jesus' sufferings the glory of self-giving love and the promise of resurrection life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture lesson appointed for uh, this day, for Wednesday and Holy Week, is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, and I'm go going to read verses 21 to 32. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining close to his heart. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After receiving the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because G Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him, him in himself, and will glorify him at once. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I've always found this part of John's Gospel, where Judas Iscariot is identified as Jesus' behavior, or be, betrayer rather, to be one of the most puzzling and, you know, really disturbing passages in the whole Bible. There are just so many questions here. Mainly, why would Jesus do this? Or why would Judas do this? Why would he turn on his beloved master? And how could Jesus knowingly, because John tells us elsewhere in his gospel that Jesus knew all people, how could Jesus knowingly include someone like Judas in his closest circle? Like, why would he do that? For 2,000 years, Judas has been the archetype of treachery and betrayal. The poet Dante placed betrayers like Judas in the first circle of hell, where the fire was hottest. On the surface, Judas was perhaps motivated by greed, money, mercenary wickedness through and through. Except it isn't as straightforward as it seems. Matthew and Mark report that Judas was so overcome with remorse that he returned the money and then took his own life. John tells us to further confuse matters that it was all part of the plan. Judas' betrayal was a fulfillment of scripture from Psalm 41, which says, Even my closest friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. However, what's always struck me most about this story, and I can remember this even when I was a child, is just how bewildered the disciples are by it all. When Jesus tells them that one of them will betray him, their first question is, who is it? In another version of this story, they say the unspoken part out loud. Could it be me? It's like they were lost in this fog of bewilderment and confusion, unable even to know their own thoughts, their own hearts. 
And even when Jesus tells them straight out who it is, that his betrayer is the one to whom he gives the bread, they still don't get it. Well, John portrays Judas' betrayal as not just human greed, but as the manifestation of evil forces that are bent on thwarting what Jesus has been sent by God to do, to make peace with a broken and rebellious world. It says, Satan entered into Judas. So while we would like on the one hand to be Judas to be the epitome of pure evil, someone with whom we could never identify, someone whose actions we would never do, if we're honest, we have to face this awful possibility that it might be us. Could we betray Jesus? Do we betray Jesus? Could it have been me? The fact that Jesus was betrayed not by an implacable foe, but by one closest to him, should give us all pause. For we who are Christians and good churchgoers may think of ourselves as those close to Jesus, but is it us who betray him? Is it us who sell him for pieces of silver? side with his enemies against him, all the while convincing ourselves that we are his favored ones. These are hard and painful questions that today's reading forces us to confront. Unless we're willing to go to that dark place, however, I don't think we can really grasp the mystery and power of Holy Week. We'd like it to be someone else's doing, someone else's fault, We'd never be like them, but it could very easily be us. The miracle of Holy Week, however, is that this dreadful truth is not the cause for despair, but for hope. Roman Catholic scholar Josef Blanc has written that the love of God is so powerful, so all-embracing, that even a betrayer of Jesus has a place in the divine plan of salvation. Even the betrayal of love could not prevent the victory of love, but instead was forced to contribute to that victory. In Holy Week, I think we are compelled to face up to what we are capable of doing and what we could have done. But because Holy Week is about what God has done, this accounting does not lead us to despair, but to gratitude and praise because it really is true that God's love can conquer all. Holy Week has inspired much beautiful and moving music over the years. My favorite Holy Week hymn is My Song is Love Unknown. The words are by the 17th century poet Samuel Crossman and the music by the English composer John Ireland. Uh, you can find the words in uh, the Voices United hymn book at number 143, and I invite you to listen to this version recorded by Aidan Miller. Who at my need his life did 
And now may grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And may the blessing of God who has created us, God who has redeemed us, and God who sustains us be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.